Today we're talking about smart wars, different kinds of wars. If in the past we fought with swords, then tanks, then aircrafts, today we're fighting with keyboards. We see that in recent years, every once in a while there's some kind of attack, whether it's on governments, on hospitals, and many other facilities. And on this show we'd like to understand why is all this development taking place in our times? And what led us to the cyber warfare? We'd like to understand this phenomenon and open with the question, what does the transition into information warfare symbolize? What changed in humanity? Many things are changing in humanity. If in the past we used to fight for food, family, work that will provide for our basic needs, then today this no longer exists. Among the younger generation, there are plenty of people that don't know what does it mean to work. They simply live their life. How is that? Because they're simply receiving what they think that they deserve, even though that they don't. If a hundred years ago we watched Charlie Chaplin movies about how people fought for work, any kind of work, just in order to have a piece of bread to eat in the evening when you come back home to your family. Today, no one talks about that. What does it mean that there's no bread? or not having a place to live, or what to wear. You have all of these things abundantly, even though that in the past 100 years, we quadrupled the world population. We're only 2 billion, and now we're almost 8. And so, there's nothing we can do. We don't need people to work in our times. And the word is that soon we'll have factories where there are no people at all. What will 8 billion people do? We have no idea. We're a very strange species on Earth because we exist without a purpose. We're not like animals. We always were like animals, only a bit more sophisticated, let's put it this way. And today, no more. So today there's no correlation between our exertion, the work that we do, the talents and skills that a person has and the way he lives his life. He simply lives his life, and that's that. And therefore, money is kind of losing its value. It doesn't matter if a person is some kind of a professional in a certain field. Anyone can live his life and survive even if he's not doing anything. It's something very strange, actually. The entire capitalistic, simple basis that existed from the beginning and to this day that was always about productivity, what I can do, how much I can do. Today, there's no correlation between the two. It's unproportional. How much I work, I understand, I know, I do, I succeed, and what I'm paid for it. It still exists, but we see that soon it'll disappear altogether, and then we will have a world that lives off wet. If instead of workers, you'll have robots, what will we do with the workers? We'll have to give them some kind of a basic income. But the robots, who will they work for, for someone to buy it? So we won't only have to give those workers food and clothes, we'll have to give them money. 
for them to buy, for them to buy, for the factories to work, and if the factories work, and so on, and this is going to be kind of an artificial cycle, and all this for what? So that the factory owners will have more money in the bank. What do they need more money in the bank for? Meaning it's all losing its value. If I have some kind of currency that others get for free, even though that they have a million times less than I do, then it's useless. And therefore, who'll own these factories? Who needs it? And therefore, the entire motto, the entire drive, the pressure, the goal for which I exist in order to succeed, to make it, to be more, it's all disappearing. Our ego, it's diverting us in the opposite direction that it's not worthwhile working, that nothing's worthwhile. Fill your time with games, soccer, basketball, different foods, movies, and this is how you'll live your life, even without a family, without kids. Some drugs, and everything's going to be fine. How long can this last? It can last until our desire changes. Because it's all based on one thing, that is our desire that constantly changes. In the past, it used to grow. Our ego grew, and correspondingly we developed different kinds of industry, trade, family, instead of a village, you built a, a city instead of a city, a country, and so on and so forth, and we truly yearned for it. Later on, our ego started demanding culture, education, different things. Then our ego started competing with everyone and so on. It was a very powerful engine that worked in all of us. And this way advanced all of human society. But now, no more. Now, it's no longer advancing us. It doesn't want to? We don't want to advance. What for? What do I have as a result? There are millions of people that are out of work, and they don't have to work, and it's a good thing that they don't want to work because there is no place to work. So what do you do about them? A liberal society can't kill people. It's not like in the past that there was a king, he sent them to war, Maybe half of them won't come back. Today, you can't do that anymore. And today's wars can be very problematic. Maybe we're creating some kind of a climate problem. But today we can pretty much overcome all of these problems. Maybe some plagues. Who knows whether the person starting the plague won't be harmed himself. Meaning, these are really problematic matters. And therefore, humanity is really in a state where it doesn't know what to do.